Hello children, let me tell you a Christmas tale, a tale of Napoleon, who on one fateful Christmas Eve took a trip down the streets of Paris and almost exploded. <coughs> I'm not gonna do that voice. The year was 1800. Napoleon had not yet crowned himself emperor, and was, as of now, first consul. The title was a bit too much for many in France, who were still riled up with revolutionary fervor. The traitor to the revolution that he was. They would deal with tyrants just like they dealt with the king, poorly and messy. The newspapers had reported that the first consul and his family would be attending the opera on Christmas Eve night. So a plan was hatched. A plan that we're all too familiar with today, but at the time, it was one of a kind. The plotters were gonna take out Napoleon with a roadside car bomb. Well, technically not a car. The bomb would actually be in a carriage, and also not roadside. Uh, just directly placed in the middle of it. Napoleon took the same exact route whenever he went to the opera, so it wasn't really hard for the plotters to know where he was gonna be. All they had to do was place the carriage in the middle of the road and wait. Soon, the target appeared, speeding down the street. It was going fast, a bit too fast, faster than the lookouts really expected. Fuses were lit, but it was too late. By the time the carriage exploded, Napoleon was already passed. The explosion was pretty big. Even at the distance that he was, both Napoleon and Josephine's carriages had their windows blown out. A lot of people were dead. We still don't know how many actually died. All we know is Napoleon and his family were not one of them. They made it to the opera without any sign of losing face. Yet deep down inside, Napoleon was already plotting his revenge. Vengeance against the Jacobins who had wished to bring France back to a time of chaos and disorder. What followed can only be described as a blanket purge. Over a hundred Jacobins were exiled, three were executed, and the explosive act was used to bolster Napoleon's political ambitions. An explosion in the middle of the street, that's gonna get some attention. It was such a unique way of trying to assassinate someone. It had never really been done before. I mean, it was certainly attempted, on a much bigger scale, and in a way this is kind of similar to the attempt on Hitler's life in Operation Valkyrie. These are two plots that came so close to drastically changing the history of Europe. Ones that barely failed by the slimmest of margins. So how did this plot fail? How was Napoleon able to escape such a fate? Well, in part, as with anything with Napoleon, it had to do with Josephine. Earlier in the night while getting prepared, Josephine kept messing with her outfit. Napoleon, being the absolute stud that he was, was sick of her taking too long to dress and decided to just leave without her. So the two took separate carriages. Not only was Napoleon earlier than usual, but his carriage driver was also drunk. I guess he was celebrating Christmas a bit too early with some wine. So now because the driver was plastered, the carriage ended up going faster than it probably should have been. If you think about it, if Napoleon had been a better husband and stayed with his wife, and if their driver wasn't drunk, there's a possibility that everyone could have died. The Napoleonic Wars, the fall of the HRE, the great peace that came across Europe for a century, are all in part the consequence of marital issues and drunk driving. Makes you think. There were immense casualties, including a teenage girl who just so happened to be right next to the carriage. In fact, she was standing next to the carriage the whole time, because she was paid. Paid to keep the carriage from leaving by the royalist ex-noble Pierre Robinal. Yes, a royalist. Despite trying to kill Napoleon earlier in a similar way to Caesar, the Jacobins were not responsible for this plot. It instead was the idea of royalist rebels, Pierre Robinal and Joseph Pierre Picot de Lemelin. I am going to butcher all of these names. Just as Jacobins hated Napoleon for betraying betraying the revolution. The royalists hated Napoleon for never reinstating the Bourbon dynasty and the rights of the nobles who had been deposed. Napoleon was in the way. There was a series of royalist rebellions throughout the revolution. Uh, they had taken the name of Schwannery, or Schwann for short. Since any military action failed, they now resorted to being the 18th century version of the IRA. Now this whole time you might not have thought much about it before. But getting that much gunpowder would still be pretty hard to do, 
even by French Revolution standards. And that's because these two were not working alone. They were funded by Schwann leader Georges Cadoudal. Cadoudal was a former general who had lost his rank during the revolution. In the aftermath, he fled to Britain. It was there that he took on another role, a middleman. When that carriage exploded on Christmas Eve in 1800 on the streets of Paris, it might have been put into action by the Royalists, but it was funded by the British. The Eternal Anglo strikes again. Britain had a vested interest in taking Napoleon out, and the Schwann were perfect allies. They could get into Paris undetected, and all they needed were the supplies and funding to carry it out which is where the British came in. This was just one attempt that the British had funded, and as we can assume, they all failed. The girl who was paid to hold the carriage didn't possibly know that she was attached to a bomb, an unsuspecting victim of circumstance. And you know, if you're gonna walk away from this video with anything, uh, walk away from the fact that the British are technically responsible for using a teenage French girl as an unsuspecting suicide bomber on Christmas Eve to take out Napoleon. Eventually, Napoleon did come to find out who was really responsible. But I mean, come on, what better excuse to get rid of those pesky Jacobins than this? None of those royalists responsible would come to survive the next few years. Catadol died in what I can only describe as a Napoleonic version of the Bay of Pigs. The British took him and a few fighters and landed them on the coast of France to kidnap and overthrow Napoleon. It went about as well as you would expect, and he was executed in Paris. It makes you wonder how much history might have changed if just a few things had gone differently that Christmas Eve. If the driver wasn't as quick, or as drunk. If the plotters signaled to light the gunpowder just a little bit sooner. If Napoleon had been less impatient with his wife. Or if Josephine had just made up her damn mind, come on woman, we're gonna be late. Had that happened, and Napoleon just died in 1800, he might have ended up as one of history's big what-ifs, or simply relegated to just another cog in the chaos of the French Revolution. Probably that. Whether the British and Royalists could have capitalized on such an assassination, who's to say? But it does make for an interesting Christmas tale. Merry Christmas, I guess. Oh, one more thing. Uh, this video was inspired by a few articles I just came across. Uh, one was a National Geographic one by Juan Jose Sanchez Aracigor. I hope I pronounced that right. There's only so many sources on this story, but if you want to learn more, uh, I'll link the articles in the description so you can check them out more. Okay, bye.